I know somebody that works that worked on uh, with Disney, and they recommended me to go join the team at Pixar to work on Coco and to just make sure that it, everything was correct and Good. authentic. And so, yeah, I was cultural consultant on that. <laughs> the zoo with Mr. Lalo Alcaraz, consulting producer, cartoonist extraordinaire on Nickelodeon's The Casa Grandes. How are you, sir? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Um, I love LA TV. Oh, thank you so much for being here with us once again. The zoo's okay. We'll see. The, the zoo's okay. <laughs> the zoo's LA TV is really great. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. So cut. We're taking them off. <laughs> Wait, so tell us a little bit about the Casa Grandes because it's a spinoff of another show on Nickelodeon. Yes, correct? I first started working on uh, these shows. Uh, the original show is called The Loud House, and it's a big hit for Nickelodeon. And it's about a, a, a boy and his ten sisters, uh -huh. Maso yeah. Menos. I El lost pobrecito. track. Yeah, I lost track. I know. Bien Latino, you imagine? También, no? Está sordo now. No. Y tú también todo el rato con dos mujeres. And uh, it's uh, there was a character in that show uh, uh, that was friends with the, the star of the main character of Loud House. Uh, her name is Ronnie Ann Santiago, mm. and she became super popular mm. to the viewers, and so they decided spin off, uh, yeah. and so. It's great timing because we need as many Latino TV shows as possible. Especially it's like cartoons. a little mini yes. renaissance. Yeah, and so uh, our show is like a, uh, it's kind of like a sitcom that's animated, sure. which makes it a little more grounded, uh, the approach to it. You know, mm -hmm. there's not, there's more and more chanclas on it that fly like, boomerangs and right. things like that yeah. and talking parrot but you know it definitely that's kind does of real, have a lot of humor i saw the episode of uh, dia de los muertos yeah dia de los muertos. i wrote that one yeah yeah i was like oh, thank you. no i loved it and it was so cute because you you have like the mexican-american life and then you have friends that you know aren't mexican don't have that background and it was just so cute seeing how you guys really were educational but had humor with it you know yeah and the, the abuela tries to explain it to both her granddaughter yeah. uh who's a little chicanita and uh, her friend who's half white half asian and they both are like they run out before the explanation is done and of course everything you know goes crazy after that <laughs> it's uh, a but it's yeah. a way to reach out to kids and show them you know culture is great uh traditions are awesome mm -hmm. and uh especially Mexican ones and Latino ones too. Yeah. Did the chicken or the egg come first? Did they approach you? <laughs> Did you hear about this and then you approached them? No, you know what's funny is um, the creative producer on uh, on Casa Grandes, his name is uh, Miguel Puga, okay. and he's a young man from Boyle Heights, and he came from the Loud House. It's kind of, you know, based on a lot of his family members, sure. uh, the characters, he really helped develop the show, and so he convinced them uh, to hire me, and he told the, they said, "Well, who is this guy?" And he, and he said, "Well, I studied him in college." Oh wow! So, wow. <laughs> so you have to hire. Wait, so you're in a textbook <laughs> or something for for a university? Uh, I'm in a lot of textbooks, and wow. and um, you were a people use you? my. Did you teach at? I did teach at uh, Otis uh, yeah. College of Art uh, out by LAX. I'm a little bit yeah. curious uh, about that specifically, like your career as a cartoonist, mm -hmm. because I feel that it's not a very typical thing, but it's no. very important because, you know, you guys... I like her. <laughs> it's a very important, you know, artistry because I feel that, you know, you're showing so many things to children and that's like, it comes with a huge responsibility as well. But how yes. did it start? Like, how did you get into that as opposed to anything else that has to do with drawing or painting? Well, or you know what's funny arts? is th is that uh, even though I do have a lot of uh, child readers in my comics, my comics are for adults. They're editorial cartoons or political cartoons. I do mm -hmm. La Cucaracha, which right. is a daily see, comic see, strip, see, see. nationally yeah. syndicated. And so um, uh, I, I use the same philosophy for the Casa Grandes. Mm -hmm. You know, we are educating on a different level little kids. You know, I grew up not seeing myself on TV, not seeing, mm -hmm. we didn't have LA TV back then. I know. <laughs> Probably Univision or something, I don't know. Yeah, you know what was on that, you know, yeah. a lot of coochie coochie, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and so. I love that coochie. <laughs> I mean, I grew up on the border. I grew up in San Diego okay. and Tijuana. And so I would just see the Beverly Hillbillies in Spanish, you what? know, dubbed over and oh things like God. that. Okay. And I grew up, that's how I learned about television sure. and comedy. But I would never see any any you know 
Latinos. Any, any, any Latinos, any Mexicans. Mm -hmm. um, and so cartoons. this, yeah, yeah. and this yeah. is what I wanted to give back to our kids, you know, so they can see themselves and, and realize we're not invisible, mm -hmm. we're there, yeah. and actually we're pretty funny, and we have lots of great customs, and, and, I like and we're good people. And the fact that you said, you know, it's about educating people, like not only children, but also adults, even through, you know, comedy or, or comics or, or stuff mm -hmm. like this, um, because we were also talking about stereotypes on The Big Deal, right. and how oh, important yes. it is to break them, you know? Uh, um, um, yes, so what's you your guys light are, on that? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I'm involved in the whole American Dirt controversy. You know, I mean, it, all my friends are, are other. I'm, a, I'm an author. Uh, mm -hmm. All my friends are authors, uh, and uh, that book is is like uh, it's emblematic of what's wrong. I think <laughs> not only with American publishing, okay. but with American society in general is okay. that. They, you know, it's like when people say about Mexicans, you know, that or, or they love us, but uh, they, 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 they love our food, but they hate us, yeah. you know? Well, and yeah. that's kind of the same syndrome that's happening in publishing is they, they're, they're cool with writing about us as exotic, you know, uh, violent, you know, whatever, uh, uh, Animals, no offense to the zoo, um, <laughs> but they won't hire us to do it. Well, that was you one know? of the things and that, that people is were upset about. That is yeah. the problem. With, with, that is like the nutshell of that right. whole whole crisis. Plus, uh, the book's horrible. I mean, <laughs> the book is. You've actually read the book. Yeah, I've read big chunks of it, okay. and it's just all wrong. You know, like the lots of things are wrong. You feel that way even if it's a novel, though. Like even if it's. Yes. Fantasy, kind of? It's not elves and dragons. It's Mexicans, you know? Yeah. It's like you can it's take, culture. do the work. that they, It's a, like my Native friends, okay? okay? My Native American friends say, they'll critique something in Hollywood and say, don't make up a tribe. Got it. The okay. Ooga Booga tribe, you know? <laughs> we Gucci, Gucci we exist, you know? Right. We're not extinct. Sure. You know, we have tribes. We're Navajo, we're Lakota, we're Crow. Right. Uh, and, and you can see all over Mexico, you know, indigenous people exist. You don't have to make stuff up right. just because, you know, whatever. If you're doing elves and dragons, yeah, all right. But everybody should watch the Casa Grandes, though. It's cool to have you outside about <laughs> That's an accurate it's, it's show right there. We're going to talk more about that in a second. We'll be back with more okay. of the zoo, folks. Don't I go anywhere. nervous. <laughs> yeah, we're done. Mr. Lalo Alcaraz, and we've actually got a piece of a little artwork from La Cucaracha. I here. heard it was hanging behind the refrigerator. There's a close up of it, and it says Club Rocamole, which I, it, do you, I don't know if you remember making this piece, but is it inspired on Roca, Rocamole here in, in LA TV? Is that because we have a show called Rocamole here as well? Uh, you know what? Probably um, I had just been on the LA TV oh, show. Got it. And I and I remembered that, so I stole it for the the name of the club, you know. We're gonna. And, so we do get residuals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Can, can we see it again, real fast? I just want to sure. point out, I'm uh, cartoonists are nerds. I put all my friends' bands in here, oh. like these Chicano bands, like uh, Los Tumbados, East LA Sabor Factory, Go Betty Go, uh, Los Pochos. That's me, uh, oh. and uh, Smoke and Mirrors, and and so you when you're a cartoonist. You get to create a whole world, right. yeah. which and so I can put whatever lo que me da la gana of course. In, in my cartoon. So I put shout outs to my friends and things nice. like that. So how yeah. political does La Cucaracha get? Very political. Yeah. And you like you like stirring the pot a little bit. Uh, the, I'm I'm yeah, I'm stirring it every day and then I flip it over. Um, how does uh, Middle America take La Cucaracha? Uh, they cancel it. That's they cancel it? Really? <laughs> really? They, you know, they, newspapers are, have been going out of business, and I'm still nationally syndicated, sure. but um, I, you know, uh, I'm mainly now here in, in the West. Sure. Um, there's a couple, I, I, my comics do run uh, out in Philadelphia and different places okay. and stuff, but... Uh, Predominantly yeah. Latin cities. You know, thing. all Latino journalists, and I'm sure uh, Latino TV personalities, news people, sure. they get hate mail just because of their Spanish surnames, mm. you know? And we were just talking about this on Twitter the other day because yeah. of the American dirt thing about right. the threats that were supposedly against the author. They were, the, all, the threats all came in to all the Latinos that were attacking the book. Because, oh, oh. I mean, uh, and, and that's our every day, you know? I get hate mail all the time. 
you know, I don't tell people where I live. I don't let people know my family's names not, yeah. because I get threats against right. them. They, they didn't do anything. How do you deal with they that? They don't even like my comics, my family. But I don't think people are threatening <laughs> you for the work that you did on Coco. You know, that was, that was pretty oh, 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 extraordinary. Oh, um, you know, I was looking through my notes, and I, I, I was going to interview you a couple of years ago, and all I had in my notes was Lalo Alcaraz, Disney theme, Day of the Dead movie. Yeah. And who would have even thought that it was yeah. going to be this huge mega hit called Coco? How did, um, how was that experience? Well, uh, it was uh, interesting because, you know, Disney tried to trademark the term Dia de los Muertos. I remember that, yeah. And that was another so, controversy. <laughs> yeah, and I did a cartoon about it, and... Uh, uh, and many people uh, protested with a, a petition, and I never signed those. This time is the one time I signed it. Uh, but, you know, the, the news erupted about the trademark on Tuesday night. By Thursday morning, Disney had, had pulled the, the, the trademark. Oh, good. Because of the controversy, because the backlash. Because somebody didn't see, much like the American Dirt thing, somebody did not understand that it, maybe it's a bad idea to try to trademark another country's Culture. cultural Culture. Ho yeah. holiday or whatever, right? right. So uh, anyway, year later, um, I know somebody that works that worked on uh, with Disney, and they recommended me to go join the team at Pixar to work on Coco and to just make sure that it, everything was correct and Good. authentic. And so, yeah, I was cultural consultant on that. That's really uh, cool and, to be a um, cultural consultant on things. I mean, you know, I wish there, that everybody at Pixar was Mexican, but, wow. you know, since they're not, uh, I'll, I'll take the job uh, <laughs> to help. But the point is, it's like making a freeway. That thing's got to last mm -hmm. 50, 100 years, sure. and mm -hmm. why not do it right so yeah. that it doesn't collapse the next day? And it's, you know, as artists, we have a responsibility to stand up for our culture, to make sure things are authentic and sure. right. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, even if it's a... a a Mexican dragon, you know, it's got to be the right, the right <laughs> the type right, of dragon. Yeah, exactly. He's a chelita he, here next to him. Yeah, that's right. He, <laughs> he breathes, you know, jalapeno fire. I don't know about a Disney movie with a chelita <laughs> and a dragon, but I mean, maybe for, you know, the LATV version of, of that one. I don't know, um, Coco had murder in it. So, oh, you know. yeah, you're right. Yeah. All Disney movies kind of deal with that, don't they? You yeah, know, they like have, orphanages yeah. or orphans and whatnot. Um, Speaking of representation, um, how much repre Latino representation is there behind the scenes on the Casa Grandes? On the Casa Grandes, I am proud to report that we have a 47% crew that is 47% uh, Latino. Good. And mostly it's the artists because, okay. you know, we have some certain skills, you know, in, mm -hmm. uh, in Latin America and Mexico. Uh, are they literally and, from Latin uh, America, or are they just of Latin descent? They're, they're, they're Latino descent, and okay. uh, so we have a lot, a lot of Chicanos uh, and uh, people from Mexico. We have and, and Filipinos who are our cousins, you know. Nice. But and then we have we have a few uh, writers on the staff, and and we all work hard. We have like uh, you know the. Uh, all Latino, um, all Latino characters are played by Latinos. Yes, you have some you know, names, and, which is a very important thing. Is it's culturally accurate casting. Uh, we have one white guy that okay. plays a Latino because he's a Down syndrome actor. He's okay. like one of the one of two in Hollywood, and so we the show is cutting edge in many ways. Sure. And we have uh, C J is is uh, a boy with uh, Down syndrome and. Uh, the actor is amazing that comes in, Jared Kozak. And, uh, yes. But we have an amazing cast. We have uh, uh, also uh, Eugenio Derbez plays yes. the yes. Yes. You know, And you have, um, I forget her name right now, awesome. she, plays, uh, she played Maria on Sesame Street. Oh, Sonia Sonia Manzano, Manzano plays yes. the Abuela Rosa. You know, she's so great. I just worked with her yesterday. Uh, she, she phones in from New York. She phones it in. <laughs> wait, she, wait, wait, she, she records the, the voice on the phone? We recorded an ISDN line. That is know? amazing. Yeah. Wow. So, so I have to tame her Puerto Rican accent. Oh, do I'm you? I'm like, girl, <laughs> you're not Sonia from the Bronx right now. You're, you're Abuela Rosa from Michoacan. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a thing, no? With 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 actors like with el acento neutro, y que porque todo el mundo habla español, pero uh -huh. pero diferentes acentos, y hay que también adaptar eso, no? <laughs> exactly. I mean, uh, and that's where I come in and and, and make sure that you know. Take things, out that whip. Things are yeah. <laughs> Stop, stop saying ven aquí. You know, she would say like, I'm like, take out that G. Ven okay. aquí, you know? pronuncia todas las S. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no te las comas. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's great. Uh, the Casa Grande's 
We're in our first season, and uh, I'm hoping we're going to go on and on for, for a while. We're going to send you, you good are. vibes for many more thank seasons. You. Many thank more you seasons. Know. Wholesome <laughs> show, co-viewing. There's jokes in there for the adults, but don't tell anybody. Okay. okay. No, I we did. All. I know. It's cool. <laughs> I liked it.